Good evening, lords and ladies, and welcome to the Progeny Behind the Fang podcast. I'm your host, DJ Craigie, with my amazing wife and co-host, Ming Chow Neapolitan Wu. It's my pleasure and honor to introduce our very special guest this evening, Diabolic Domino. He's a huge name in the Progeny community, from the creator of this podcast to the founder and creator of the Scribes Guild. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Diabolic Domino, we are so honored that our boss can join us this evening. We better have our A game up and running and Craig be on your best behavior. What Wait. a trait, part of the 30, 30 days following special episodes we have for the community. So tell us, how did you come to be a vampire? What was your embrace like and who is your sire? So I was into the Amaretto horses. You guys remember the Amaretto horses, right? Yes. I'm pretty sure Definitely. they're still around, but, but anyway, so I used to go to the auctions and trade and buy and sell and all that fun stuff because it was really popular back then, and I had nothing else to do. <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> As a fellow I addict, is. I totally yeah. understand. I yeah, love so, Amaretto. <laughs> I don't know what, what's going on with Amaretto now, but anyway, so I'm at this auction, and I am bidding and selling and, and having a good time and the auctioneer her name was Soraya and uh, she's the one that invited me to the auction I uh, met her at another auction and so we were talking in IMs because I think she missed one of my bids and um, she said uh, I see you're in bloodlines and you're dead in bloodlines I didn't think that's what it's called dead but anyway so she introduced me to progeny and um, her family was called the Dark Lust family, and they were in the Lasombra clan, which is still around. So one of the oldest clans around. Um, mm -hmm. A small family, maybe eight, ten people, and we did a nice little ceremony on a uh, homemade altar, and everybody got to take a bite of me. And you know, of course, I didn't know what the heck was going on until I got the HUD, and that was pretty fun. So it was a nice role play experience. That sounds awesome. Well, and making turning special is a really cool thing because it just sets up for a really good game. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, it's all about the role play anyway. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We need more role play. Yeah. So since you um, were embraced, how has progen Progeny Vampire like developed throughout the years? So, I mean, system-wise, which is kind of the way I look at it now, it, um, you know, we have a lot more cooler things, like we've got updated HUDs, and we're going to get an updated HUD soon. And, um, you know, back then, I think we only had potency stones were the only thing you could buy. And, and now you can get revival altars and potions and the reliquary device and the DIY fangs. And, you know, we've really wow. expanded the product line, so... The extras are there, but still, everything you need to play is free. You don't have to buy anything, so it's still a free game, which is really cool. I agree. That allows it you is, to, do, yeah. to, if you need something or if you want to, you can get it or not. It won't affect right. your actual gameplay. Okay. And so, how has your character evolved? Okay, so, I went through the, the ranks, you know, like, most other people do. Um, started out as a, the vampire worker bee, you know. Uh, yes. Did a lot of a lot of family role play. We we had meetings every week, and we would talk about politics and what we want to do as a as a house. And then it moved up to what you know a clan and what we wanted to do as a clan, and started talking about introducing bills into the grand council and um. Those kind of things, and and then eventually worked up to blood regent. You know, there was no uh, arch assistant back then. That's pretty recent and new. So I worked up to blood regent, and I was blood regent in three different bloodlines. It's kind of funny. Wow! Before I finally wow, made arch. that's impressive. Yeah. yeah so the three, theory. all yeah, all three of them. Well, two of them. Are now extinct. I'm in a, I was in three extinct bloodlines. Wow. So, 
Uh, first one was Paternus Coror, and that was Super Dexing's uh, original line, and he was a diabolic, and he's now retired. Uh, the second one was Dark Retribution, which was Arch Dark. He was the, uh, you know, arguably the first vampire made from Lachil. So I was his oh, son. Wow. Um, and then the third one was Bastion, what was Arch Raid. And I uh, got, got out of there because two, of the, all three of those lines were gone. Two of them were destroyed uh, by the source for the same reason. But I won't talk about that. Yeah, we heard the rumors about that. So yeah, I just, yeah so I moved to SD. Under, I went. I went to SD under Arch Nestus, and um, when she was made diabolic, I took over as uh, Arch in SD. And then uh, I became diabolic, and uh, Arch Risha took over for me, who was my blood regent. Wow, that is that is really cool. That's who I was yes. born under. Cool. That's a very impressive progeny career. Thanks. Did a well, lot of stuff. You know, it was fun. Still yeah. having fun. Okay, well, now let's talk about Scribes Guild. When was the Scribes Guild created? And please tell us more about the functions of the Guild and how it's changed throughout the last decade. Okay, so um, the Scribes Guild actually started with one person. Um, I can't really take the credit for starting starting it. It was a lady, uh, Lady Sang was her name, or Rambling Gal, uh, who is no longer in Progeny. She has a little little character now, a little bunny character she plays with. I still talk with her, ask her advice and stuff like that. She's really cool. Oh. Um, so, but things were different back then. The The meetings that we hold now are nothing like we did back then. Back then, the meetings were basically Lachille talking about changes and updates and um, answering questions about laws and politics and and role play and those kind of things so that changed when he wanted to uh allow the vampires to rule themselves to make their own laws to hold each other accountable so he didn't have to deal with the drama basically mm -hmm. and, and could work on you know coding and things he likes to do so in 2012 or 2011 um, Kat and I revived the Scribes Guild because it had fallen away after Lady Singh uh, loved mm -hmm. progeny. And, um, you know, all we want to do is collect and archive and make available all of the uh, literature that's ever been created about progeny and, and all the meeting and uh, create summaries and write the notes, all the raw, raw chat. It's all available. Um, that's what we try to do. And I think we're doing a pretty good job of it. And right now, we are doing it in English, we are doing it in German, and we are also doing it in Spanish. So all that's available in those three languages right now. Working on French. That is amazing. And the Scribes Guild is probably one of the most important guilds in all of progeny, I have to say. Oh, they work. They work hard. They really do. It's, it's a yeah. tough job. It really is. And, and, you know, it's a thankless job. They're kind of like Marines, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. First yeah. one's in, last one's out. And yeah. The value of that place is, like, with the knowledge. Um, I remember when I was first brought into it, I made a few mistakes. And I, in order, I had to go to the Scribes Guild and write, like, read for an hour and write down what I learned. And oh, I learned cool. a lot. Ah. I it came it started as a punishment but it was a blessing because i learned so much about the system and it's just a great i love the place it's where i go for everything yeah you're right all the knowledge is inside the scribes guild in those bookcases um start at the beginning and work your way to uh current and you know you'll be in progeny 10 years by then because we have a lot <laughs> yes. of stuff Oh yeah, you got some free time and you and you want to read. There is amazing. So yeah. now the podcast here, um, tell us like how did the concept of like the behind the fang 
actually birth. So if you visit our podcast channel, yes, which you know, um, I think we're on like episode somewhere in the fifties now. But we've been doing a lot of podcasts, or I should say, you guys have been doing a lot of podcasts. The originals were started with um, the source, and uh, I was the you know, cat, and I were the first persons on the podcast. So it's pretty cool to be back again. It's been a very long time. Wow. Well, he started and did like three or four. We did one like live action one at his house uh, with with some people there. And that's awesome. Playing a little D&D while we were there, which was fun. So oh, that's kind of how it's evolved. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're big into that kind of, you know, board games. Yeah. Well, that is awesome. And, you know, I'm sure magic cards came out, too. Oh, no, we actually played Settlers, Settlers of Catan, which is another oh. board game. <laughs> oh, that is very cool. I've never played that one yet. I've heard of it, but I've never tried. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And lately we've been playing, um, oh, what's it called? Let me think. Uh, yeah, let's just skip that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Dungeon, Dungeon World. Heck Yeah. Well, that is super awesome, and it's a real honor for myself and my wife here to be part of this podcast. We love it, and we're always trying to get new and interesting people, so keep that in mind, folks. <laughs> we certainly have our share of cool and interesting people and progeny, and some really talented people. Very. Absolutely, yeah. I try to um, tell them how like interesting their characters are, and hopefully they actually... We'll muster the courage and come on here because it would be an, a great show. A lot. You know, of we it. have some really, really great scripters out there. We have some great builders. Uh, I mean, you name it, we've got it. I mean, look at uh, how many different people and progeny are making their own following follower huds. You know. Got some oh, great definitely. Scripters. Yeah. It's it's been quite the trend. I mean, I did one myself. It it is <laughs> a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, I did one. You did one. Gavin's done one. A lot of people have done them. They're like, they're the weaponized of your clan, right? So it's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. You can brand it with your clan. That's, that happens a lot. The monarch. <laughs> it's like putting the label on your sword, right? Right. So. Exactly. Now, do you have any exciting new plans for the future of the podcast that you can speak to us about? The future of the podcast? Yeah. Like anything new and exciting? <laughs> uh, well, not really. I think the format we're doing right now is this is pretty much the same format we've been doing since Lashil uh, was doing the podcast. We kind of just followed his, his format and uh, it's been working and people will listen and make good comments and so yeah if it's working why change it yeah that's true amen sir we hope to have uh, our source and our Apirian on here very soon actually it'd be great especially within the 30 days of Halloween you know what yes. would be cool is to get a couple more languages like German and French for example or even oh, yeah. Russian we have quite a few Russian players too yeah, and it's very exciting to have the Spanish podcast team and closed caption on, you know, the ones that are done already, past, present. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's exciting for the community. You know, catch up on them all. Start from the beginning. Right. So I guess I have to ask this question. <laughs> What's it like to be a diabolic? How did you get blessed or maybe cursed, depending on how you look at it with that position? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what they say, the higher you uh, go up in rank and progeny, the more drama you deal with. Mm -hmm, yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. That's how, it, that's how it works. So you become a house leader and then you're you know, you're dealing with the he said, she said drama or the... <laughs> yes. <laughs> How the, fun. The, or usually it, house and clan and arch and all that. It was dealing with people and breakups and bad love and that kind Whoa. of stuff. 
yeah. And, and as a diabolic, it's so and so cheated, and I get that uh, four or five times a day. Yeah, oh, it's a it's, hard job. It's not fun. Not easy. Yeah, it's and a, what sucks is you got to say, okay, show me your evidence. Well, I don't have any evidence, and I really can't do much. Yeah. Like, sad to say, almost like if the glove doesn't fit, right? Right. And I mean, it's not like I'm going to make a decision about it anyway. If, you know, somebody does have evidence, and it's a diabolic law that's broken, and not a inner clan law or a, or a grand council law, then I will mm -hmm. turn the evidence uh, over to my peers, the other diabolics, and we make a decision together. And if it comes down to a vote, we vote on it and uh, decide together. It's never one diabolic that really makes any decision. We're, so, we're like, much like the Arch Conclave, right? Right. So, like the Illuminati, you mean, right? <laughs> the Volturi. <laughs> you all and see all. Or the Nothing Vampire like the Authority. Yeah, you know, the only thing I can really do different is is scan people different, or, you know, I don't have to be on the same sim as you to kill you, so. Oh. Did y'all <laughs> hear that? <laughs> so out. when you see that IM box pop up. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's the opposite of what I want to happen. If I, I want everybody to feel free to. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, they answer questions and stuff. It's no problem. I'm happy to help. No, I've uh, I've had to reach out, and you've been very fair and very respectful always. So I appreciate Thanks. that. And a lot of people try to you know weaponize the diabolics. That is annoying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, diabolics can have friends too. It doesn't need to be that way. And right. I see how I see how it is. It's like how people can get with. Um, the Linens, for example, oh, I got friends in Linen Lab. Well, so <laughs> is, is that a threat? Yeah. So yeah. what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, one thing we didn't ask you that I want to ask you is about the Orientation Guild. You're also uh, the supervising uh, diabolic for the Orientation Guild as well. How did that come to be? Ooh, that was actually proposed by mm, Infernal Morpheus. Um, you know, he and I used to talk, and and uh, he would say, uh, "I have these ideas," and I'm like, "Well, you put them all down, and let's develop the idea." So he developed the idea. You know, you know, this is something we need for all of progeny, and so we created the orientation guild, and it pretty much manages itself. I don't have to do much. You know, um, mm -hmm. he's a great guy. Takes care he of is. it. Always. Always honors people and, and does his best to help people, too. He does, absolutely. Like, education and, you know, making everyone's experience a good one in progeny is very important to him. He is an amazing uh, person, amazing leader. I'm very, very proud very to work there person. with him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and besides the Orientation Guild, the Scribes Guild, I also do the Wiki. That's right, the Wiki, Yes. Yeah, so I have another team that does that. So basically, I just have teams of people that help me. Ah, uh, yes. I have to speak with that team very soon myself. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're another thankless team because you don't see who does it. But there's uh, like right now, there's like four or five people that uh, help work on the wiki. Well, that's a lot of work. And they yeah, do an excellent is. job. The wiki page, I highly recommend everyone to go and read through it. It's, it's amazing. Another forum that houses so much knowledge. Well, right. much respect to the developers of that page, I must say. Yeah. That's something absolutely. else that uh, Lachille started and handed over to me. So I yeah, thank him for that. So you are a very busy diabolic. You have a lot of duties, a lot of tasks that you do daily. But yet I get bored. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, we can find some more stuff for you to do, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> no, but that's, you do a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yes, it's an honor to work with you um, and for you, like in any, in any capacity. 
Um, do you have any last words or parting words or bits of okay. valuable information for the community? Yeah. Yeah. So the new HUD that we're working on, um, the design will be different from what you have right now. Okay. It's actually a, a design that uh, Arch Gavin came up with to make oh. combat a little more friendly. So you can see the blood bar a little, little easier. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So you know, moving to the HUD base fangs um, and it's going to be um, tested, you know, for a week or two before we actually get it out. But it is looking amazing. Um, I can't yeah. wait. Me neither. Ah, it's the, going to be awesome. And HUD base fangs that just made me smile. I'm yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you know it's cool with the uh, you know all the all the mesh avatars and, and heads. Now you, they all come with fangs, so you really don't need the fangs. I mean, the fangs yeah. were, for progeny were created back with you know the, the system avatars. Yep, and you couldn't really get fangs. <laughs> right. That is super That's awesome. going to be great because when you came into someone's head and you can see them sticking in there or when you lose your head during combat, and there they are. So <laughs> that's great. And then I've you lost have my head. To... Oh, that's you, something you I also miss. Doing it right, combat. I, <laughs> I can't take place in combat anymore, but I, I do miss that. I... Yeah. yeah they do say it's fun. <laughs> right, Greg? Well, definitely. It's been a while for me, too. I kind of feel like, you know, one of those, like, wrestlers that get out of shape or something. I got to get back into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you don't use it, you lose it. And exactly. you know what? The last thing I would say is remember it's role play and that uh, role play doesn't really happen in IMs when you're calling each other names. That's not role play. That's when it's getting too serious and you maybe need to back off. Mm-hmm. It's, so it's true. just not good. Definitely, so you can. Very good advice. When you feel yourself getting heated, take a little. Usa. Yeah. <laughs> take a break. Yeah. Yeah. I learned that the hard way myself. I definitely agree and understand. That is key. Respect. You know yeah. what else is going to be great about those things is it's very hard to tell fledglings how to click and edit them into their head. This is going to save us so much time. <laughs> it's <laughs> going to be awesome. Yeah, because every time they wear them, they're like sticking out and they look like some hillbilly, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yes. <laughs> And it's funny when they don't realize it and you're like talking away. Oh, my God. My fangs are sticking right out of my face. <laughs> yeah well I guess if you have anything else uh, down about your domino that you'd like to let the community know before you we know, go as soon as, soon as we uh, end this recording I'm sure I'll go like oh wait no I'm good I think uh, <laughs> I think I that's how it happens yeah mm -hmm. and we can always have you come back too so sure Anytime. We're honored to do this. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. It's been a real honor. And so just to close it out, um, stay tuned for more exciting new special episodes from the team here at Behind the Fang Progeny Podcast. 30 days of our favorite time of year, Halloween. So you don't want to miss this. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you have someone you want to hear about, hit us up in world with your suggestions and comments. We work for you. Oh, and, and you too, Diabolic Terminos. So until we meet again. <laughs> Thanks for spending your eternity here with us at Progeny Vampire. Good night, community.